This is number six in my series of 10 relatively short videos on 10 reasons why cessationism is wrong. And maybe I should just preface just for a moment here. I, I come right out and say it. I, I believe cessationism is wrong. I mean, I suppose I could have phrased that, and a couple times in this series I have phrased it, uh, 10 reasons why I think cessationism is wrong. But that's obvious, isn't it? I'm presenting these videos. I think cessationism is wrong. I think that the idea that there were particular gifts of the Spirit that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Romans chapter 12, that God granted to the first generation of Christians that he somehow pulled back and now excludes from subsequent generations of Christians, that these gifts of the Spirit ceased. Not all the gifts of the Spirit, not cessationists don't believe that all the gifts of the Spirit have ceased. They believe that God continues to do miracles. They, they just would think of it in a very different way than someone who is a continuationist. Maybe they take the title of charismatic, maybe they take the title of Pentecostal. But this is number six of ten. Cessationism is wrong because cessationists misunderstand the purpose of the gift of tongues. I'll just put it to you very simply. The gift of tongues was never intended for communication among people. Let's say horizontal communication. The Bible specifically says that the gift of tongues is given as a tool of communication between the believer and God. It's a vertical tool of communication. And this is expressed very plainly in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. But let me say this before I read 1 Corinthians 14, 2. The failure to really consider this accounts for much of the criticisms of the gift of tongues that is made by cessationists. I think they just failed to take into account or adequately take into account 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. As a matter of fact, there is a line of interpretation among some cessationists that say that the Apostle Paul actually meant the exact opposite of what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. I think that is a very dangerous and, and erroneous line of interpretation, but let me just read it to you here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, friends, I, I just want to say right off, any interpretive approach that would say that the Apostle Paul actually meant the opposite of what he says there, as if he's trying to be super sarcastic, super ironic here. No, 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 no. This is what he means. This is what the Holy Spirit inspired him to say. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, how does this misunderstanding or failure to account for this passage work? Well, okay, I'll tell you some things that I've seen in more than a couple YouTube videos. A cessationist watchdog, uh, by the way, I, for me, it's fine that there's cessationist watchdogs. As I said before, there's a lot of frauds, freaks, and false prophets in the so-called charismatic and Pentecostal world. It's absolutely fine for people to pay attention to those. But, uh, of course, I don't agree with everything that a cessationist watchdog might say, but th their general purpose and uh, much of what they do is fine. Anyway, a cessationist watchdog plays a video of someone speaking or praying in tongues. Typically, it'll be a person, a man or a woman, speaking from a platform. You know, they're there behind the pulpit, they're getting all excited, and then they'll just run off in, in, in incomprehensible words, which they regard to be the gift of tongues. Now, let me just say, when I see that in a video, this is what I think. First of all, maybe the person is exercising the legitimate gift of tongues, maybe not. I don't exactly know just from either being there in the moment or seeing it on video. I don't exactly know. I, I would not positively say one way or another. That's number one. Number two, whether it is the legitimate exercise of the gift of tongues or not, I don't think it belongs on video. If it is the legitimate gift of tongues, 
what that person is saying is to God and not to men. It, it doesn't need to be on video. It doesn't need to be published on some platform for clicks. That, that is, in a sense, prostituting someone's relationship and communication with God for the curiosity, the interest, the clickbait among men. I don't think it belongs on video. If it's legitimate, and if it's fake, well then obviously it shouldn't be on video. But the point is this, as the watchdog hears the phrases of what is supposed to be, not, not supposed by the watchdog, but supposed by the person speaking, what is supposed to be the gift of tongues, he'll say something like this. Well, that's not a language. That's just nonsense. It's gibberish. It's not a language. But friends, remember the principle, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Dear cessationist watchdog, I'm certainly not here to dismiss all your work. You do some valuable work for the kingdom of God in, in pointing out the, the, the frauds, the, the fakes, the false prophets, the freaks. Okay. But dear cessationist watchdog, it doesn't need to make sense. It doesn't need to sound like a language to you or to anyone else. They're not speaking to you. They're speaking to God. As a matter of fact, the Bible is clear that tongues can't be understood without supernatural interpretation. It, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, the second part of the verse says this, for no one understands him, however, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. No one understands him. And if, in other words, it's very clear. The communication of the person exercising the legitimate gift of tongues, it's not intended for a horizontal kind of communication. It's intended as a vertical kind of communication. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole thing of the interpretation of tongues and how that can be a benefit for the entire body. J just to say that it, a person's vertical communication with God can be edifying to other people if they understand it. But that's not the primary purpose of it. The primary purpose of it is the communication of that individual with God. But no one understands him, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, and in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Well, Mr. Cessationist Watchdog, no wonder it sounds like gibberish to you. You, you can't exclude that as being the legitimate gift of tongues merely by how it sounds to you. Now, I'm not saying that it necessarily is a legitimate. More would have to be uncovered. More would have to be uh, delved into this. And I don't blame you for being suspicious, but I'm just saying this. How it sounds to you is not a reason to exclude it. The meaning of what one says with the gift of unknown tongues is unknown even to the one who speaks in the unknown tongue. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14, Paul says this, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. I don't even understand it, Paul says. But my spirit prays, and there's edification and blessing in it. Now, when the cessationist watchdog hears a person speak in tongues, assuming it's the legitimate gift, and says, this doesn't make any sense. This is crazy. This is madness. They are saying exactly what Paul said they would say. Again, remember 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Of course they will. They're not speaking to you. The Bible specifically says that you can't understand it and that you're going to hear it and say that it's madness. Because even though I would not call you an unbeliever, God forbid, I would say that on this particular point, you fit the description in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23, you are at least uninformed. You're uninformed about the true nature of the gift of tongues, at least in my perspective. So, yes, the gift of tongues is for the edification of the individual. Paul spoke about that the most. Yes, the gift of tongues, when interpreted, can be for the edification of the gathered church. Paul also spoke about that. Yes, the gift of tongues can also be a sign to unbelievers, a sign of judgment. 
Now, this is not the only or the main purpose of the gift of tongues, but it certainly is one of God's purposes for the gift of tongues. The, the element of edification is stressed far more in the New Testament when it's speaking about tongues than the idea of judgment. But certainly that is an aspect of the purpose of the gift of tongues. Yes, the gift of tongues expresses real language, often a human language, although it could be a dead language, an obscure language, or possibly even a heavenly or angelic language. I mean, I don't want to get too far into the weeds of that, but we would just say that's a bit speculative, but it is real language. It doesn't have to make sense to you. No, the gift of tongues was not meant and is not meant for horizontal communication, to speak to or to preach to others. The gift of tongues was and is meant for vertical communication between the individual and God. If a bystander overhears and understands, well, that's somewhat accidental, and it's not directly tied to the purpose of the gift. Now look, the whole matter of the gift of tongues, I'll admit, it gets complicated. I feel that many cessationists approach the gift of tongues as if it were meant to be a tool of communication from person to person. And that's why they stand back and say, well, it doesn't make sense to me. This can't be a language. This can't be legitimate. This can't be valid. But I also feel that many Pentecostals approach the gift of tongues as if it was a merit badge wrongly taking it as the evidence that one is truly baptized with the Holy Spirit. I believe that both those approaches are wrong. The cessationist approach is wrong, and what you might call the classically Pentecostal approach is wrong. The, the idea that speaking in tongues or the gift of tongues is the evidence that one is truly baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, both of those are wrong, and, and both of those do damage to the church if, if they don't understand those things correctly. But a substantial part of the cessationist dismissal of the gift of tongues is rooted in ignoring what the Bible says is the purpose of the gift of tongues, and that is to speak to God and not to man. That's why my point number six is cessationism is wrong because the cessationists misunderstand the purpose of the gift of tongues. Look, we invite your feedback. We invite your comments. We invite you this. We can't promise we can reply to everything, but this is a thing that people are interested in and it's fair to have discussion about it. We invite your feedback on this and we hope that you'll be able to join us for the entire series of these 10 reasons why cessationism is wrong.